Hi friends, once again good evening and welcome to my channel Mukambika Nursing. Friends here we are discussing questions for ESIC and RRB exam preparation. We are discussing questions from subject wise. Already we completed three part in fundamentals of nursing. Surely those questions will helpful for your studies. Today we can discuss questions from medical and surgical nursing. First question. A referred pain to ear from tonsils in peritonsillar abscess is due to the involvement of which nerve? Options Option A. Auriculotemporal nerve Option B. Mandibular nerve Option C. Trigeminal nerve Option D. Glossopharyngeal nerve Our question The pain in the ear in case of peritonsillar abscess is occurs due to the involvement of which nerve? That is the question. So, the nerve which is affected in peritonsillar abscess is glossopharyngeal nerve. Option D is the correct answer. Move on to the next question. Another name of Quincy is? Options. Option A. Retropharyngeal abscess. Option B. Paraepiglottic abscess. Option C. Parapharyngeal abscess. Option D. Peritonsillar abscess. The term? Quincy, Q U I N S Y. Quincy means peritonsillar abscess. Option D is the correct answer. Okay, it is mainly due to acute streptococcal or staphylococcal infection. Infections, this acute staphylococcal or streptococcal infection of the tonsils. Tonsil infection is known as tonsillitis. Move on to the next question. Which one is the most common site to obtain capillary blood sugar sample from an infant? Option Option A. Ear lobe. Option B. Fingertips. Option C. Abdomen. Option D. Heel. Our question. Which is the most common site to take capillary blood sugar sample for an infant? It is heel of the foot. Option D is the correct answer. Usually, medial or lateral plantar surface of the heel of the foot is the preferred site to take blood sample in case of infant up to 1 year of old. And the next question, which position is preferred for a patient after vitreectomy? Options, option A, Sims position, option B, prone position, option C, semi fowler's position, option D, fowler's position. Our question, the position given after vitreectomy. Vitreectomy means is the surgical removal of some amount or all of the vitreous humor of the eye. That is known as vitreectomy. So, after vitreectomy, we can give prone position to the patient. Option B is the correct answer. We should not allow them to sleep on patient back because that could make some bubble movement in the macular hole. And the next question, what is the normal mean pulmonary artery pressure? Options, option A, 10 to 15 mm Hg, option B, 15 to 20 mm Hg, option C, 20 to 25 mm Hg and option D, 25 to 30 mm Hg. Normal mean pulmonary artery pressure is 15 to 20 mm Hg. Option B is the correct answer. The next question. Development of the kidney takes place in options. Option A. Thoracic region. Option B. Lumbar region. Option C. Sacral region. Option D. Cervical region. Kidney is developed in Sacral region. Option C is the correct answer. Development takes place in the sacral region. And the next question. Kidney situated in. Option in pelvic cavity. Option B in thoracic cavity. Option C in abdominal cavity. Option D all of the above. So the kidney developed in the sacral region. And it is situated in the abdominal cavity. Option C is the Correct answer. Kidney is a retroperitoneal organ situated behind the peritoneum. And the next question. After several diagnostic tests, a client is diagnosed with diabetes insipidus. A nurse performs an assessment on the client knowing that which symptom is most indicative of this disorder. And our options. Fatigue. Option B. Diarrhea. Option C. Polydipsia. Option D. Weight gain. 
here the diagnosis of the patient is diabetes insipidus and the nurse is doing assessment for the client among this option which is the most indicative sign of this diabetes insipidus okay so as we have to know here what is the clinical manifestation or what is the signs and symptoms of diabetes insipidus then we can answer this question easily diabetes insipidus occurs due to hyposecretion of antidiuretic hormone signs and symptoms we can see polyuria polyuria usually 4 to 24 liters of urine per day and polydipsia polydipsia means excessive thirst and dehydration inability to concentrate urine low specific gravity of urine fatigue postural hypotension and tachycardia this all related signs and symptoms because of this polyuria excessive water loss from the body so the correct answer will come polydipsia polyuria is known here polydipsia is there so excessive thirst is one of the indicative symptom of diabetes insipidus move to the next question a client is admitted to an emergency department and a diagnosis of myxedema coma is made which action would the nurse prepare to carry out initially are options option a warm the client option b maintain a patent airway option c administer thyroid hormone option d administer fluid replacement here the question is a client is admitted in the emergency department with diagnosis of myxedema coma and what is the initial or primary nursing management for this case in case of myxedema coma myxedema coma is occurs or developed from persistent or continuously low thyroid production okay that cause myxedema coma and as a nurse immediately she should maintain the airway patency of the patient okay here answer will come maintain the airway patency if needed give oxygen to the patient and also if secretions are there in the mouth means we as a nurse she should keep ready for aspiration precautions then after that can do fluid replacement and warm the client and also administer thyroid medication all will come on next next step okay monitor the vital signs everything will come one by one behind of patency of the airway the first or initial nursing action is to maintain the patent airway and the next question moon phase and buffalo hump are the characteristic features of which disease options option a addison's disease option b cushing syndrome option c si adh si adh means syndrome of inappropriate anti diuretic hormone and option d myxedema here moon phase and buffalo hump are the clinical manifestation of cushing syndrome option b is the correct answer Cushing syndrome is characterized by hypersecretion or increased secretion of glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex okay so clinical findings of this cushing syndrome we can see the first one is generalized muscle wasting and weakness muscle wasting body muscle wasting and weakness then moon phase and buffalo hump trungal obesity with thin extremities that is still the area of abdomen there will be obese and both extremities means hands and legs will be thin okay and weight gain then supraclavicular fat pads then hirsutism hirsutism means masculine nature in females also hyperglycemia hypernatremia hypokalemia hypocalcemia hypertension okay and also a reddish purple stripe on the abdomen and upper thighs a reddish purple mark in the abdomen and upper thighs this is the important manifestation of cushing syndrome so this last option reddish purple stripe on the abdomen and upper thighs are the manifestations of which disease like that in previous question they asked so all the manifestation how to learn and the next question which assessment should a nurse to perform to obtain most accurate assessment for a client with hydronephrosis 
options option a evaluate serum electrolyte option b maintain intake and output option c weighing of the client option d all of this question among this option which is the most accurate or most appropriate assessment for a client with hydronephrosis it is weight daily checking of the weight option c is the correct answer and the next question the causative organism of peptic ulcer is options option a helicobacter pylori option b staphylococcus option c e coli option d streptococci the causative organism of peptic ulcer is h pylori or helicobacter pylori option a is the correct answer move on to the next question dumping syndrome is a complication of options option a colectomy option b sub total gastrectomy option c nephrectomy option d hysterectomy dumping syndrome means is the rapid emptying of the gastric content into the small intestine and mainly occurs after gastric resection or gastric surgery okay so the correct answer will come gastrectomy sub total gastrectomy option b is the correct answer move on to the next question hemiplegia means options option a paralysis of both lower extremities option b paralysis of one side of the body option c paralysis of upper and lower extremities option d none of this our question what is hemiplegia hemiplegia means is the paralysis of one side of the body option b is the correct answer first option paralysis of both lower extremities is known as paraplegia that is both lower extremities means both legs and uh, option c paralysis of upper and lower extremities that is all four extremities are paralyzed that is known as quadriplegia and same another one term monoplegia monoplegia means paralysis of one limb either upper or lower limb any one limb that is known as monoplegia so quadriplegia monoplegia paraplegia and hemiplegia so far we discussed questions from medical and surgical nursing most of the questions are from previous year question papers surely this important points and questions will helpful for your studies